it's currently 10 p.m. I'm editing right now and I realized that I didn't even tell you what this video is gonna be about. So I thought I would just give you a very brief, brief, brief overview. <laughs> okay, so like many of you, I've literally tried every single workout regime, every single diet under the sun. I've tried apple diet, corn diet, sweet potato diet, IU diet. I've literally tried every other vegetable diet you can think of and unsurprisingly, nothing ever seemed to work. Which is why the ground rules I laid for myself this time around were number one, no counting calories, number two, no weighing myself. I think it's really important for us to gradually change our perception of a quote-unquote successful diet from numerical values to something more important that we might not necessarily be able to quantify, such as mood, energy, or overall happiness. It's also important to note that lasting change takes time. Habits govern up to 95% of our lives. In psychology, all habits fall under a habit loop where essentially our minds are rewarded for good habits and bad habits. Unfortunately, there's no way to ever fully get rid of a habit. We can only change and make new habits. So give yourself time. 21 plus days to be exact, according to Charles Duhigg. There's no rush. If you're interested in learning more about habits, I highly recommend these two books. Now let's move on to diet. Part-time intermittent fasting. I basically did very loose intermittent fasting where I ate for 8 hours and I fasted for 16 hours, meaning I would have my first meal at around 12 and my last meal around 7. If I wanted to go out with a friend for dinner or if I wanted to drink a breakfast smoothie, I did. I really don't think there's any need to be super strict with this because this is only a part-time job. Do not raise your voice to me, sir. There's a lot of scientific literature that supports that intermittent fasting promotes weight loss in both normal and overweight individuals. This 2015 study found that men of normal weight still saw a favorable decrease in weight when fasting for 11 <laughs> plus hours a day. In addition to weight loss, it also helps with overall cardiometabolic health and oxidative stress, which contributes to inflammation and aging. I'm told! I beg your pardon? Intermittent fasting is overall quite safe and doesn't usually contribute to eating disorders, but make sure to proceed at your own risk. Part 2, Less Processed Carbs and Sugar So it's no secret that in order to lose weight, we need a calorie deficit, but how can we achieve this deficit without actually counting our calories? For me, that meant no rice for one year, except for special occasions like my birthday or Chinese New Year. When you eat rice or anything with a high glycemic index such as sugar, pasta, or processed carbs, our insulin level spikes and drops after you finish eating. In the short term, it causes lethargy and hunger. In the long term, it can lead to type 2 diabetes. I'm not gonna lie, it was really difficult at first, but I actually didn't really feel a drop in energy or feel hungrier because of this change. And please don't feel the need to completely cut rice out of your diet. I would recommend just gradually cutting down on processed carbs that are the most prevalent in your diet and working to sustain a diet that actually works for your lifestyle. Hey, I'm Dua, and I'll be your instructor today. So like everything else in life, consistency is key. Rather than sporadically doing a 30 minute workout once a week, I'd much rather just exercise for five minutes a day I created a playlist of short but effective no equipment home workouts that I do every day and all you have to do is do at least two videos daily. Many of these exercises are only 5 minutes because I understand that everybody's busy. Collectively, I do a minimum of 10 minutes of exercise a day and I know it doesn't sound like much, but over the course of a year, even if you rest once a week, that's still over 3,000 minutes of exercise. I usually let myself take rest days whenever I need to. My only rule is that I never rest two days in a row because I don't want it to turn into a habit. Also, just a bonus, if you suffer from cellulite on the back of your legs, these two videos really helped me to personally get rid of my own cellulite. I saw really great results after around two months of doing these videos daily in conjunction with my diet. I also just wanted to add that it took me around a year to lose 15 pounds. I'm also very tall, so 15 pounds on me won't necessarily look the same as 15 pounds on someone shorter, for example. Now that I'm just maintaining my weight, I'm pretty flexible about my diet, but I still try to keep carbs and sugars as low as I can. I think that's partially why I was able to maintain my weight for the past two years without really having to actively worry about it. I really hope that these tips will be able to help you on your own health journey. 
People usually overestimate what they can achieve in one year and underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years and your body is going to be with you for the rest of your life so I feel like it's so important to note that every positive step you take to improve your health today will have lasting impacts on you in the future. Believe in yourself and just take little steps in the right direction and I'm so excited to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!